first in the U.S. Navy's great new fleet of aircraft carriers is ready well ahead of schedule. Completed in 15 months, she's sponsored by the wife of the Assistant Secretary of Navy for air. Christened the Essex, she's the Navy's fourth ship to bear that historic name. Plane carriers superseding battleships as the capital units of sea power. School children from the boyhood home of Henry Ford gather to celebrate the 79th birthday of the famous American industrialist. With his wife and son Edsel, the founder of mass production pauses to revisit the scenes of his earlier triumphs. Here in the very machine shop where he experimented on his first horseless carriage, Mr. Ford turns the pages of history back 50 years to the original Ford car. Today, Henry Ford is doing his biggest job, building bombers for Uncle Sam. Relics of the early days of motor cars. The days when Papa cranked and someone yelled, get a horse. A steam-powered auto built in 1910, still puffing and ready to race the best of them. And can they really run? Here's the antique auto derby of the year. Electrics, steamers, and gas burners rattling away like museum pieces come to life. A classic of the Connecticut countryside, with the winner's purse and all the profits donated to United China Relief. <music> Historic Saint-Anne de Beaupré, Canada's Shrine of Miracles, celebrates its annual novena to the Blessed Mother of Mary. The original shrine was established by shipwrecked Breton sailormen nearly 300 years ago. Today, thousands of pilgrims follow the procession of the Blessed Sacrament to offer anew their prayers for a better world. Cardinal Villeneuve, Archbishop of Quebec, leading the way. Before the Stations of the Cross, they pray for loved ones, absent ones, in this world at war. Haven for the afflicted, saint anne de beaupre has been called the Lourdes of America. So amazing have been the miracles performed. From all parts of the United States and Canada they come, people troubled in body and in mind, people turning again to the faith of their fathers, the faith of the ages. devotion bringing freedom from affliction to untold sufferers. Canada, celebrating a spiritual rededication to God, to country, and to victory. U.S. tank assembly lines perform another miracle of mass production changing over to bigger, heavier, more powerful units without the loss of a single day. They're now building what tank experts call the finest mechanical weapon of its kind in the world. Rolling from factories by the train load, bound for fields of battle in Africa, in Russia, in China, in the Middle East. Here, a dramatic example of their tremendous firepower. Planes and tanks, mightiest weapons of modern war, irresistible in action.
the United States Supreme Court, bastion of democracy and the nation's highest tribunal, guarantees justice to all men, even to the eight Nazi saboteurs captured while planning a reign of terror in vital American war industries. In armored vans, under strong military escort, the prisoners roll through the Capitol to the courtroom of the Department of Justice. Strict secrecy is maintained. The public gets not so much as a glimpse of them. For these men, accused of attempted espionage, sabotage, and treason, the United States government demands the full penalty of death. Here in the sands along the Atlantic coast, the Federal Bureau of Investigation uncovered the first damaging evidence, buried cases of TNT and other incendiary devices. Detected coming ashore from submarines in the middle of the night, they stored their deadly supplies and fled inland where they were captured. Boxes containing thermite and detonator caps are not easily explained in time of war. At headquarters, the FBI reveals uniforms the invaders brought a money belt that carried 174,000 American dollars to finance their deeds of destruction. Innocent looking wooden blocks, when examined by government experts under X-ray, reveal hidden detonator caps, caps made in Germany to wage a war of terror behind America's home front. Here are seemingly harmless pens and pencils, but they're heavily loaded incendiaries. That one little wooden pencil could have started disastrous fires, but a vigilant nation caught them in time. By special order of President Roosevelt, seven generals were commissioned to hear the case, to give the prisoners a fair and impartial trial. High-ranking officers were appointed to defend them, and they pled eloquently in their behalf. For 18 days, the prisoners were brought before the bar of justice, shielded, protected, given access to all the process of the laws of democracy. J. Edgar Hoover, head of the FBI, followed every phase of their trial. Now, in official courtroom films made only by army cameramen, the military tribunal nears the end of its dramatic session, a session unparalleled in all U.S. history. The court weighs the evidence. Here's U.S. Attorney General Biddle, established beyond all question of doubt that these men came as enemy agents, that they plotted and planned the destruction of American lives and property, that they brought weapons and the money with which to carry out the orders of the Nazis. And when two of the prisoners confessed, the fate of the other six was sealed. The verdict, death at dawn. Democratic justice sounding a warning to all who would invade America. Beneath a battery of electric fans, Texas fighter pilots don fur-lined clothing for a flight into the sub-zero temperature of the stratosphere. On the ground, it's a sizzling 110 degrees. And in these Eskimo outfits, that's hot in any language. Called Satan's Angels, these hand-picked steel-nerved crews have the toughest job in the Air Force. Schooled in high-altitude fighter tactics, their battlefields are thousands of feet above the Earth. Executing perfect teamwork, they play a grim, exciting game of follow the leader through ethereal clouds in a world all their own. machine gun nests peeling off into space. Satan's angels, death diving for Uncle Sam. 